Hi folks, so um, what I want to do now is just give you an example of an introduction on how to use Ghidra to start to perform analysis on a binary program. So we're going to look at the interface um, in terms of how you use it to do analysis. Uh, that includes doing like things, variable naming, commenting, uh, and following functions and um, really trying to start to unpick what a program's doing. <clears throat> so we're going to be using um, Ghidra and um, we're just basically going to jump in. So um, I recorded it. The, the last video was an introduction to kind of what you can see on the screen, um, but I'll um, start to dig in a little bit deeper now. So if we look here, um, I showed you last time that there is a um, simple crack me here where it asks for a password and our aim is to figure out the password that will satisfy the program and tell us that we did a good job. So um, when we were looking at the program to start with, um, we noticed that in the um, read-only um, data section of um, the executable, there's this um, th there's a something that looks a bit like a password. It says crack this and it's got some interesting capitalization. Um, we ask for, and there's a string asking for a password. This um, data here, um, Ghidra's not detected the data type. Um, so instead it's just showing the bytes. But looking at this, um, we can say with some confidence that this is, this is a string. Um, and we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute, but you can see here that it's got percentage 14s, so it looks like a format string. Um, and there's another sorry message here. Okay, so there's, an in, there's, there's some constants there for us to be aware of. Um, if we go to the um, start of the program, this is the elf header, uh, so we can see here um, the, the, the header table and um, some other things there. But really what we're interested in is the actual um, code which kind of starts here and there's the start function um, which is part of the boilerplate for getting a program started on a, on a Linux system as, the, as per the standard. Um, uh, I think it's the system V or 5 um, standard for ELF files. Basically it tells it where to start, which is in the start function, and it does a bunch of these things. So deregister TM clones, uh, register, and that, so there's a bunch of things here. And um, so some of those, so this check password one is, a, is a, obviously something that we're interested in in a minute. There's the main function, there's some initialization stuff there. Um, you can see just looking at the list of symbols here, there's a bunch of stuff that um, is just part of the boilerplate and we can, um, we can ignore it for the most part. Obviously we don't know that malware is always going to um, stick to the standards, but um, most of the time that boilerplate will basically not be that interesting. Um, you can see here there's this, um, there's a bunch of thunk functions uh, and what that is 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 basically a, um, a function that calls an external library. So the little function stubs that just link into the external libraries in our program. Um, so you know not that not that interesting. So you see we can um, uh, if you double click on them you can actually see the, the function here and the linkage to the um, actual library. And because when I imported this, I told it to also import the library, um, then it's possible to basically, you know, go, go into the linked library and start analyzing that. Um, you know, if you click yes to this, then you'll start to decompile the, um, the library itself. 
We probably don't really need to do that because 2 lower itself is a well-known library. Uh, we can look up what that is. Um, and in fact, because it's a standard C library, we can literally do man to lower and look up the actual manual page for it. You can see here, so from the Linux command line, um, you know, we have uh, basically it takes a character as input and it um, basically is going to output the lowercase version of it. Okay, so that's interesting. That's been called. That's definitely going to be um, helpful to us to know what that is. Um, and obviously a very good place to start in our analysis is the main function. So if we start here, um, we can see that the um, the Ghidra decompiler has already, already given us something that seems quite logical. Um, seems like it's, it's giving us quite a, quite a lot of insight into what's happening. Um, so the, the steps that we can use to, to decompile something, especially when things are quite complicated, this is a, a nice simple example, but what we need to think about is renaming variables so that they make sense, so that we can actually read it. Uh, you know, when you get a function that has a lot of a lot going on, the more variables that you can name to something that actually describes what they're doing, um, and you add some comments in, you can actually create self-documenting code. Um, so let's see. So here we've got um, two variables defined. There's an integer, um, and it's given at the name i var one. So okay, fine. And there's a character array called local seventeen. Um, there is a printf statement that says enter the password. ISO C99 scanf. So the this is basically a um, standard for C programming um, that defines some um, updates to the C language. Since has been updated again since then. But um, <clears throat> this is an example where well, that doesn't actually make it that clear to us. What we can do is actually, um, you can see also here, it's being passed in uh, something here, um, and also this local variable. And this something here, we can double click on to see where it's defined. And this is that format string that we were talking about before. So the way scanf works is you pass it a format string and um, basically which describes to scanf what you um, are going to read from the user and then you pass in a variable which is where the, the input is going to get stored. Um, so here what we could do is um, we could manually rename these things. So we could um, rename the function and just call it scanf, uh, you know, because that's pretty clear, just as clear by itself. Um, this we could um, rename, so rename the, the global variable. Uh, we'll call that um, format string. Uh, let's call it the input format string. Um, okay, starting to look a bit clearer. We can rename this one. So each time we're doing rename, um, it's the the shortcut for it is L. So you know, when you, when you're starting to get do this a bit quicker, you can just click on it and click the L on the keyboard, and it will will pop up. So you know, this is basically reading from the user um, the input. So this is really this is our user input, um, and we know that because that's what the scanf function does. And this is, um, you know, calling an external library, so we can be reasonably confident that that this is the user input. Um, now, you know, Ghidra's done a nice job here of actually updating the the name through the code. So now we can see here we've got our i value one equals check input uh, user input. Okay, so this is basically. Um, this i of r1 is our um, password success value. So it's basically it's checking the password and it's something's coming back from that and it's being stored in here. So 
this is a success value from whether or not they've entered the password correctly. And then, so then if the pass success equals zero, then it's saying well done. Otherwise it's saying, sorry. So if you look at that now, compared to the code as it was when we started, that's a lot clearer. Like, especially when you imagine you, if you're faced with a screen full of code, if you can work backwards from functions like we just did from the scanf function, we know that, you know, that what goes into a scanf function, we can name them. We can kind of work backwards from those function calls uh, and we end up with something that has a lot more meaning than we started off with. Um, now there's some other improvements before we have a look at this check password function. I want to talk about something else that we could have done or should have done instead. Instead of just renaming these things, um, we can um, we can actually edit the function signature for these. Um, actually, we'll do one more thing first. So here, remember we said that this is a string. We can actually tell it that that's a string. So if here we go to data and then we basically say this is a string. Um, it does um, basically, it understands that internally and now when it's showing us the scanf function, it shows us the format string inline because uh, we're not using it more than once. It doesn't need to give it have, use the name for it. It can just literally just put the literal value into the code because um, it's only using them one place anyway, so it makes it more readable. What we could have done instead of doing that, so I'm going to press undo, which is one of the nice features, so you control Z on the keyboard. One of the nice features of Ghidra is that you can undo the things that you do. So believe it or not, it's not something that um, other um, reverse engineering tools, you know, actually have a good feature of, of actually undoing what you've done. So we can undo that, and instead, let's get the function function signature. So if we type man scanf. So we're going to look at the documentation for the scanf function. Um, you can see here this is the um, the function signature. So we can copy that, and in Ghidra we can do. Oops we can edit function signature and hang on, sorry, let's click on scanf, edit function signature. And now instead of being scanf returning undefined and receiving nothing, um, we could have told it, well actually we know scanf, uh, actually this is, this is how it works. It has a, um, returns an, an integer and um, we pass it in a format string um, followed by um, this is a variadic um, a um, function that has a variable number of of arguments so you, the three dots means that it could then be followed by other stuff but the first input is always a character array or a pointer to a character array was what, what this means Ghidra doesn't like the const thing so we have to remove that um, but you would find that out if you just clicked OK. Um, and it gives you an error message, but basically you give it to it in a format that it wants. And now you can see here, it's automatically detected that it's, the data type is a string and it's given it to us that way. Um, OK, so we can do the same for the main function. So a main function... Um, in C, let me just copy and paste this, should look like this. So if we do edit function signature, instead of being undefined main void, we can actually pass in, this is the, the actual file sig um, function signature for the main function, so it basically has the command line arguments coming in as well. Um, if we define that correctly, it will actually um, improve some of the um, you know, what's going on uh, in terms of our readability of our code and understanding what's happening. So now going through to this check password function, um, let's have a look. So check password, it says it's detected as being void. Check password, um, 
and it receives a, a pointer to a, a character array um, called param1. All right, now we already know from what we just saw that this is returning a value. And if we remember what we saw in the main function, we saw that the um, this check function is actually being stored as an integer. So what we know now, and, and we're receiving um, the user input into this check function, this um, check password function. So now having now that we know that, we can um, retype the return value as being an integer, because we know that that's what it does. And we can also rename this uh, instead of calling it param1, let's call it the user input because we know that's what it is from what we just saw from the main function. So now if we're looking at this code, um, we've got a um, an integer which it's just named ivar1. We've got a character array called local1b. We've got another integer. Uh, we've got our local c equals zero, and this is being used as an index to an array, um, which is the password. So okay, so what it is clear is what's happening here is it's, it is going to be accessing the different acts, the different characters in this string. So we could uh, follow uh, standard convention and just call that i because it's a counter. So when you're doing this, it's a good idea to use descriptive variable names. Um, but when you've got a loop, it is um, standard practice to use the letter I, J, K, L, um, to use uh, like uh, a counter. So we'll call it I. You could call it counter if you want to. So, and this is already starting to look clearer. So while um, password I, doesn't equal the terminating character, then ivar1 equals to lower int char password i. Okay, so there's some interesting, there's some weird things going on there around casting. Um, but basically, we, we're getting each value and we're storing it. The lowercase version. Um, of each letter. So um, we're, we're basically, um, this is the lowercase version of one of the characters from the, the uh, original password constant. So again, let's rename this. Let's call it so the lower pass character. Um, so we're taking this password and we're converting it to lowercase. And then we've got this other variable that was defined here, and we're putting the lowercase character into the same index value. Okay, so this is, it seems to be building some value in here. So we can um, rename this to be our calculated string. So uh, and then it's incrementing our counter. So basically, it's just going through every letter and it's going to keep going until it hits a null character. So basically, that's working through our original um, constant password, converting it to lowercase and building a lowercase version, essentially. So this is creating this calculated string from looking at this is going to be the lowercase version of the original password. And then we're doing a string comparison between the calculated string and the user input. Uh, and that gives us the lower pass character and it's returning that. Um, so this is interesting because actually um, it's using the same variable here, this integer value. Um, but you could see that that this value was used here as a temporary um, calculation value 
and then here it's actually being used as a return value. So um, the you know in the original it'll be interesting at the end we'll we'll compare to what the original code is. Uh, but you can see here, um, and actually if we look at the assembly code we can probably make sense of why that's happening. Because here we've got these different variables and some of these variables like um, like this one, but some of these are actually being defined on the stack, whereas some of them are actually being stored only temporarily in CPU registers. And so the, the decompiler can't tell whether or not this is um, actually the same variable or a different one, as long as it's the, uh, the actual compiled version is it's being stored in the one register. So um, yeah, so that's interesting. And that's one of the reasons why it's helpful to be able to refer to the assembly code and understand, be able to understand what it's what it's doing and make sense of it. When you come across something like that, um, you can kind of breed through the assembly and it helps to make sense of it. Um, so now uh, we have basically solved the challenge if you think about it. So we've figured out that the check password function is just converting the string to lowercase, the, the, uh, the constant to lowercase and comparing our input to it. It's returning the value that comes back from string comparison. Uh, and if we go back to our main function, um, and again, we can use the cross references to get back there because it shows you where all of the, um, you know, where this function is called from. It's from main, so we can click back there. Um, so from our main function, it basically just uses that value uh, to make the decision. So now, um, with that knowledge, we can have another go at uh, running the crack me and you type it in as all lowercase and it tells us that we've succeeded. So we've managed to um, basically get back from it. Now, if we compare that to the actual original C, Um, hang on, just give me a second. If we compare to the original C code, this is what the original C looks like. So, um, so actually, the final version in Ghidra does not exactly match um, what the what we ended up with. So. Let's have a look at that side by side. So we can see here um, the original. This is the original challenge that I that I pro that I programmed, and basically it is defines a constant called password. Crack this, um, and the way that it's actually converted to lowercase in my original code is with a for loop. Um, Ghidra has interpreted that as a perfectly valid functional equivalent, which is a while loop. Um, so, you know, it's not a big deal, but you can see it's different. Obviously, we've ended up with different variable names because we didn't know, you know, that, that really doesn't matter. And, um, and you can see here that in the original code, the return value was just, you know, all in one line, but, you know, separated out into separate lines there. But, you know, it's pretty close. Um, and, you know, using Ghidra, even though we didn't have the original source code, um, we showed how you would logically work back to basically discovering or creating a version of some source code that does a functionally equivalent thing. And in through the process, we've been able to understand what the original program did. Um, so really, that is how you use um, Ghidra uh, and an introduction to how you go about doing the analysis.